precipitatingly poor. Ardnamachan Point to Cape Roth. South, four or five, increasing six or seven, going southwest, five to seven. Fair, then rain or drizzle, showers later. Good, occasionally poor. Shetland Isles. Southwest, backing southeast, four or five, going southwest, five or six later. Fog patches at first, rain or drizzle later. Moderate or good, occasionally very poor at first. And that completes your shipping bulletin. I'll be back with a look at today's weather in just a few moments. But for now, over to you, Chris. Susan Powell. This is BBC Radio 4. It's half past five on Monday the 11th of July. Good morning. This is News Briefing with Chris Aldridge. The Foreign Secretary Liz Truss launches her bid to be the next Prime Minister. It's been confirmed that Sri Lanka's president has fled the country after protesters stormed his official residence. In business, the UK looks set to face another week of strikes. And in sport, England's cricketers win the third T20 international. The Foreign Secretary Liz Truss has become the latest senior cabinet member to enter the race to be the next Conservative leader and Prime Minister. She said she wanted to get back to Conservative values and pledged to start cutting taxes from day one. There are 11 candidates so far. The 1922 Committee of Conservative Backbenchers will meet today to finalise the rules. The Pensions Minister, Guy Opperman, set out what he wanted to see. My hope is that colleagues will come together and fight ultimately as a package and that I hope is what will happen as a result of both the high nomination threshold, which I, certainly would be my preference that there is at least, certainly it's got to be 15 in my view, but it's not for me to decide, it's for the 22 to decide, and then a decent threshold on the first round so that people can have a proper discussion about all right, how are we going to come with a balanced ticket which will then be able to be a balanced uh, portfolio to the government. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, will make a speech today attacking what he calls an arms race of fantasy economics by the Conservative leadership hopefuls. He'll accuse them of making unfunded tax promises and say Starmer now opposing tax increases, increases they approved while serving in Boris Johnson's government. Emily Thornbury is Labour's shadow attorney general. We have a complete disconnect at the moment when we have a, a campaign where you know there are there are conservative MPs who voted for sort of 15 tax increases under the con under this conservative government, but are now I mean this weekend have committed to 200 million pounds worth of of tax cuts. I mean it, none of this yeah. makes any sense. The Speaker of the Sri Lankan Parliament says President Rajapaksa has fled the country following the storming of the presidential palace. Thousands of people have been protesting against shortages of food, fuel, and medicine. The president has announced he'll return on Wednesday and resign. This protester said the occupation of the palace would continue until the president and the prime minister were gone. Until two of the three key demands of the people's movement are met, which is that Gota Abe resigns, that's the president of this country. Uh, the prime minister resigns as well, and then the government also, who the people feel do not have any legitimacy anymore to lead, or any capacity really to lead this country through this crisis. Israel has promised to investigate media reports of a mass grave containing the bodies of Egyptian commandos killed during the 1967 war. Two Israeli papers have published documents and witness accounts about how dozens of Egyptian troops were killed in Latrun, west of Jerusalem, and buried there. A court case which could reshape the future of football in Europe begins in Luxembourg today. Real Madrid, Barcelona and Juventus sued European football's governing body UEFA, saying that it should not have the power to block rival competitions or punish those involved. The three teams continue to support the European Super League breakaway project, which collapsed last year. Government scientists have come up with a novel way of controlling the grey squirrel population, spiking hazelnut paste with oral contraceptives. Grey squirrels have driven the UK's native red squirrel to the verge of extinction. The scientists have also developed a feeder with a weighted door that excludes the lighter red squirrels. It's hoped that trials of the contraceptive could lead to a new national strategy. That's the BBC News. Now to Susan Powell from the comfort of her aircon, I hope. Morning, Susan. Good morning once again, Chris. Yes, like it or loathe it, we are going to be talking quite a lot about heat across the UK through the week ahead. We did see 
blanket temperatures above average across the UK on Sunday. It will very much be the case again today. And very little has changed in terms of our weather scenario, but actually something uh, fresher in the way of air spilling its way into Scotland and Northern Ireland for the next few days. The temperatures will actually ease off here and it should become more comfortable by night. But uh, some intense heat will continue, particularly for the southeast of England throughout the week ahead. Looking at the forecast for today, for England and Wales, there's plenty of sunshine out there already at the moment. A few patches of mist and fog across the northwest of England and North Wales will burn off pretty quickly. Temperatures are already in the mid-teens and that sunshine is going to push those temperatures up but throughout the course of the day. Some high cloud could turn the sunshine a little hazy through the afternoon. There could be a little bit more cloud drifting down the North Sea coast into Norfolk and Suffolk. But widely for England and Wales today in the sunshine, we're looking at temperatures in the high 20s with the low 30s possible as far north as Yorkshire and as far west as the Welsh borders. For Northern Ireland, some cloud creeping in will make things a little cooler than yesterday. It was the hottest day of the year so far. It will also become slightly more breezy, but we're still talking about highs of 22 or 23 degrees here. For Scotland yesterday, the hottest day of the year as well in the east. More cloud around in general here also today. Quite gusty winds in the northwest, a little bit more breezy across the board in general. Temperatures again, though, still widely in the low 20s. I think we'll see 25 somewhere in the east today. Chris. Thanks, Susan. 25 to 6. We'll look through the papers now, many of which feature the Conservative leadership contest. Scorcher is the headline for Metro as it reports that the race is heating up. But with 11 contenders so far, and possibly more to come, the Financial Times says senior Tories are plotting to rapidly thin out the field. The threshold to make it onto the ballot paper will be decided at the meeting of the 1922 Committee of Conservative Backbenchers, with the papers suggesting that the support of as many as 36 MPs could be required. The Guardian thinks the figure will be 25. The I reports that the former Chancellor Rishi Sunak is the favourite to win the contest, but claims Tory MPs on the right of the party are seeking to block him. The Times says Boris Johnson's allies are considering which contender is best placed to beat Mr Sunak before deciding who to back. According to the paper, he's the target of increasingly intense attacks by rivals who blame him for putting up taxes. One of Mr Johnson's most loyal supporters, the Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries, tells the Daily Mail that Mr Sunak has been working with the former Downing Street aide Dominic Cummings. Mr Sunak told the paper he hadn't spoken to Mr Cummings since the advisor left number 10 in late 2020. Another candidate, the Chancellor Nadim Zahawi, has vowed to publish his tax returns if he makes it to the final two, according to the Daily Telegraph. In an interview with the paper, Mr Zahawi accuses his critics of using dirty tricks and denies that he's ever been contacted by the authorities as part of an investigation into his tax affairs. The Foreign Secretary, Liz Truss, also appears in the Daily Telegraph as she launches her bid to replace Boris Johnson. She says that it isn't right to be putting up taxes now and pledges a long-term plan to bring down the size of the state and the tax burden. The Times reports that the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, is highly likely to join the race today, pitching herself as the only authentic Brexiteer who can lead the Conservatives. The paper says she'll make a final decision after talking to Eurosceptic MPs. Westminster isn't the only place that's heating up. Hawaii Sky Vos, says the front page of the Daily Star. It reports that a Saharan tongue of fire means Britain will be hotter than Honolulu today and claims 70% of people will be tempted to skip work to enjoy the warm weather. The Times says Britain could see record high temperatures this week, with forecasters urging people to stay in the shade, cover windows and check on vulnerable and elderly people. The Daily Mail says more than a thousand British spies put the UK at risk by bragging about classified work on the social media website LinkedIn. The paper says they made themselves potential targets from China and Russia. And the Daily Mirror reports that toothbrushes could soon be replaced with shape-shifting micro-robots. They're made of iron oxide nanoparticles that create a chemical reaction in the mouth. The paper says the micro-robots can scrub, rinse and floss teeth and are aimed at making brushing easier for elderly or disabled people. And that's our look at the papers. We'll turn to business now. And it's the start of what may be a week of deteriorating industrial relations. Andrew Wood has the details. 
Thanks. Unions are getting bolder, fighting for higher wages so their members' standard of living keeps up with the rising cost of living. The most, the most recent figures for inflation show that prices were rising by 9% annually and the Bank of England says that it could increase to 11% later this year. Post office workers are walking out today from more than 100 sites across the country. Barristers will also stop working for four days this week and it's the third week of escalating strikes in the legal world. And two rail unions, the TSSA and ASLEV, have been consulting train drivers over industrial action. Those ballots end today and may lead to further industrial action later this month. Manchester City says a cryptocurrency trading platform is going to be one of its sponsors for next year, from, uh, for next season. From today, OKX will be its official training kit partner for both the men's and women's first teams. And Birmingham Airport was the worst in the UK for flight delays last year. According to an investigation by the PA News Agency, departures from Birmingham were an average of 12 minutes and 24 seconds late taking off in 2021. Now markets, selling's a quarter of a cent weaker overnight against the dollar. One pound buys one dollar and 19.9 cents and one euro 18.1 cents the euro is worth 84.7 pence and it's lunchtime in hong kong where the hang Seng index has started the trading week quite far down it's dropped by two and three quarter percent to 21,131 uh, at the end of the morning session Andrew Wood, now to sport, and England's cricketers have won the third T20 international against India to avoid a series whitewash. With news of that and the rest of the headlines, here's Paul Serres. Joss Butler's side beat the tourists by 17 runs despite a 55-ball knock of 117 from Surya Kumar Yelav at Trent Bridge. David Milan top scored for the hosts with 77 of 39 deliveries, while Rhys Topley took three for 22. In tennis, Novak Djokovic's his fourth consecutive Wimbledon win has more significance after he needed time to weather the storm following his deportation from Australia in January. Djokovic beat Nick Kyrgios in four sets on centre court to win his 21st Grand Slam singles title yesterday. In football, Belgium and Iceland drew one all in their opening match in Group D at the Women's European Championships. In yesterday's other match, France were 5-1 winners over Italy. England face Norway and Northern Ireland take on Austria in today's games. In Formula One, Ferrari Charles Leclerc beat title rival Max Verstappen to win the Austrian Grand Prix and closed the gap at the top of the Drivers' Championship to 38 points. Lewis Hamilton finished third, the seven-time world champion's third podium finish in a row. And Xander Schofele of the USA won golf Scottish Open by one shot from compatriot Kurt Kitayama, finishing on seven under par, three strokes ahead of the highest placed Briton, Tommy Fleetwood. Paul Serres. Now look back at a couple of stories that were making news on this date in years gone by. Last summer, English hopes of ending the long wait for a major international footballing prize were cruelly denied by a defeat on penalties to Italy in the European Championship final. The Wembley crowd went into raptures when England scored in the opening minutes of the match. Italy equalised during a goal-mouth scramble in the second half. A long, tense stalemate followed, then England missed three penalties. The manager, Gareth Southgate, had this message for the players who hadn't scored. And it's down to me. Um, you know, I decided on, on the penalty takers based on what we've done in training. And um, nobody is on their own, you know. It, it's, um, we, we've run together as a team and it's absolutely on all of us in terms of uh, not being able to win the game tonight. Um, but in terms of the penalties, that's, that's my call and um, it totally rests with me. And in 1975, China's great terracotta army was uncovered near the ancient capital of Xi'an. More than 6,000 life-size warriors were made around 206 BC to guard the tomb of the first emperor. That completes this morning's news briefing. Now time for Prayer for the Day with Sarah Joseph, who's the editor of ML, the Muslim Lifestyle magazine. Good morning.